Okay. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, yeah, follow my voice, follow my voice. So you can come over here. Yeah, keep on coming, keep on coming. Stop, turn to your left. There's a door. There you go. I like to say that in many ways, blind hockey, not just changed my life, put it on a different trajectory, but in many ways saved it at the same time. So for a regular goalies, they use their eyes. My eyes are my ears. You like the hockey? It feels like home. Are you guys ready? It feels like in, in your safe place. We're gonna break every barrier on its way to prove that blind hockey is a sport. His vision won't stop him from doing anything. It's time for a new era in sport. One that honors the brave. We wanted to create a space for them where they could come and feel comfortable. The bold. He really opened my eyes to having black people obviously in hockey and playing with them. The people that look different. I'm gonna get in the sled and see how far it goes. Blind hockey, not just changed my life, but he always saved it. This is a 12 part series about individuals and organizations who are determined to redefine hockey culture and to inspire a new and diverse generation of hockey fans. One day there's gonna be a little eight year old boy who's gonna look at the eight year old girl and say, you can play professional hockey too. Woo, let's go ladies! My name is Saroy Tinker. I'm a professional hockey player and philanthropist. And this is Breaking Down Barriers. Brought to you in part by Canadian Tire proud sponsor of Breaking Down Barriers. Mark DeMontis is a member of Canada's National Blind Hockey Team and the founder of Canadian Blind Hockey, a charity committed to raising funds to start hockey programs across the country for the blind and partially sighted. Thanks to Mark and this puck, more children have the opportunity to play Canada's game. Great work, great work. Nice, nice work. Last minute remaining. Oh, nice pass. Blind hockey's played a very similar to traditional hockey, uh, aside from a few modifications, as we've discussed the large noise-making puck. Nets are one foot shorter in height, and another key difference is that players on the offensive rush, when they gain the offensive blue line, have to make one clear, crisp pass to a teammate before being eligible to score. Once that pass is made, a referee will blow a high-pitched whistle to uh, notify all players on the ice, uh, and even f fans watching who are blind too, that a pass has been made and a shot can happen an attempt any second. Goalies are totally blind. They have zero percent sight. They can't see anything at all. I'm completely blind and I've been playing the position since 2003. It took a long time to get used to the position, working with a goalie coach. But over the years, like you say, practice makes perfect and you just find every goalie has their own thing. You just find your own way how to play the game. Okay, thanks, brother. Let's go. When that pucks it on the ground, it does make noise, but when it's in the air, it's completely silent. It's just an instinct where the player is like, I'll catch the puck out of the air, just as instinct. Great work, all of you. Now to uh, Canadian national team member Mark DeMontis. All right. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're really excited to have the Soroya Tinker joining us today, everyone. Can you believe it? She's here and she's uh, she's going to be taking the ice with us and hanging out. What's your name? Alana. Alana? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm Soroya. You guys like 
take slap shots with it and everything. You can't. You can't take soft slaps? You can't take a shot along the way. And I, I can't shoot very well. You guys gotta teach me. All right, so this is our puck. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than a traditional hockey puck. It's three and a half times the size. Yeah. Um, weighs a lot more too. You're gonna notice when you're shooting it. Yeah. Um, but inside there's ball bearings. So there's eight bearings inside and when they move around the puck, that allows our players with the visual impairment, the ability to track it along the ice. Okay. So it's one of the most important resources to make this game accessible for children and adults who are blind and partially sighted. All of our, my teammates and I, we all have uh, less than 10% sight. So we're legally to fully blind. There we go. <laughs> I have never seen blind hockey before. Yeah, no worries. Neither have we. <laughs> <laughs>good i'm just reaching out to uh touch base on some filming for next week with you and the trip out to raleigh for stadium series i was four years old when i started playing my brother was six what uh what do we got what do we got in store uh right now Are you hearing anything I don't know why I, I fell in love with it right away. I think it was the smell of the arena in the morning. I think it was the, just the feeling getting on the ice. I think it was, it was interesting. It was all the things I fell in love with are things that I still appreciate being someone with like no sight now. Like the smell, like the sounds, like the feeling. All the things that didn't involve sight. I think what actually drew me to the game to begin with. I was uh, 17. I was playing AAA hockey in, uh, in the Greater Toronto Hockey League with the Toronto Young Nationals. Uh, my goal was to play NCAA hockey. Summer going into my senior year of high school, but a week before I was in training camp and started realizing that I was having issues seeing the game, getting cross ice passes, locating teammates on the ice. Something was off. I was unexpectedly diagnosed with a rare eye condition called LHON, or Lieber's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it took away the central sight in both my eyes in a matter of like weeks to months. The hardest part was the hockey. That's the part that people maybe don't realize often. It wasn't the fact I couldn't drive anymore. It wasn't the fact I had issues seeing family and friends and and making out faces. It was the fact that I got released from my AAA team, the fact I couldn't make another team anymore because my sight, eyesight was deteriorating so much. That hit me the hardest because I mean, I grew up my whole life playing like five, six days a week. It was all I ever really knew. So the, taking away sight for me wasn't hard. Taking away hockey for me, now that was harder. Yeah, I, I saw that. We, if we can, it, it looked like, uh... He's been trying with the Carolina Hurricanes to get something going. Maybe if there's a way we can connect with him when I'm out there, yeah. It literally put my life on a 360. Uh, I discovered blind hockey. And I like to say that in many ways, not just changed my life, put it on a different trajectory, but in many ways saved it at the same time. Shortly after losing his vision, Mark joined the Ice Owl blind hockey team and was inspired to do more to make the sport of blind hockey more accessible to athletes across the country. And I started realizing that there were no programs for young people who were blind or partially sighted to try the game. And that hit me in a different way where I realized that not only was there something that we needed to do about this, this is Canada and this is hockey, it shouldn't matter how much sight you have, you should be able to play. But I also had this feeling inside of me and this the spark saying, did this happen to you for a reason, dude? Like, go fix this. In 2009, Mark went on a 5,000 kilometer, five province fundraising campaign and established Courage Canada to start hockey programs for the blind and partially sighted. You do not have to make a pass to score today. However, the goal only counts if you hit the target. It's his first time skating, so let's give him, his name is Nate, a big stick cheer, okay? Hey, good job, Nate! Mm. 
in traditional hockey, every kid dreams of being right now the next Connor McDavid. Everybody wants to make the NHL get drafted and win a Stanley Cup. Oh! Our youth can't dream those dreams, right? So to see these kids become and be a member of a team and learn these skills that could take you so far in life, these children and youth have role models. They look up to Mark DeMontis, they look up to Kelly Serbu, Jason Yuha, not because of the amazing blind hockey players they are, but because of the amazing people they are off the ice. I have 4% vision and going blind at 10 years old. Doctors told me I'd never play the sport again. I learned about blind hockey. It's a community. Let's go! When I'm out here on the ice with my Team Canada teammates, when I'm out helping the youth, it's a blind world with sighted volunteers. Group one, go! Nice, nice, good job, everyone! Bring it in! We're gonna break every barrier on its way to prove that blind hockey is a sport. Don't let your disability be a disability. Let it be your ability to be able to participate in this program, right? So it's something I have a lot of pride in. It's something that every time I get to ask these questions, I hold back tears because it's important to be a part of a team. All right, are we all here? Great work, great work. And we're gonna do a couple skating drills, a couple puck drills, and then let's get into scrimmage. He's 12 now, and he was born with a condition called LCA, which is Liber's congenital warmerosis. He touches everything, he goes to a new place, he touches everything in people's house just to get to know where he is. He knows the shape of the glass, he knows how it feels, you know, the noise, he knows everything. I saw all my friends like playing different sports, soccer, basketball, whatever they played. And at first I was like, oh, I can't play any of those. I mean, I'm not good at those. Uh, but then when I started to play hockey, I got really happy because I knew that I could like play a sport that they could. So uh, those two sticks, they're like the souvenirs that we managed to get when, um, when we went to a tournament. And those medals were like won by uh, everybody that were that participated there. Blind hockey was the first ever something that happened to us in terms of inclusion, fully inclusion, without me begging or asking or just explaining. Another thing of hockey is I took a picture with Mitch Marner from the NHL and we got to play with him, play a few games with him, and it was quite nice. Yeah. It's a relief feeling. It's a relief feeling knowing that in the end, he has his place. He has where to go, who to be with. He can, I don't know, it's, it's just a relief. As a mom, knowing that we, he could be part of something without struggle, with, without begging, for, please, can you include my child? His vision won't stop him from doing anything. Hockey, it was the like it opened all the doors. That's how we start to realize that we can do pretty much everything. Oh, don't worry. The real feeling is, I'm gonna describe it to you now. It feels like home. It feels like in, in your safe place. It feels like here is my place. That's how it feels. It's like everybody understands. You don't need you don't need to explain. You don't need to worry about anything. This one, the, can you move your neck? Okay. Right. Last one. And then the last one. Yeah. Then you're good to go. And I also need to bring my stick, which is a Wait, yes. I know, yes, thanks. Okay, here. Yeah! Ho! 
Holy! And I can see the puck since it's really close to me and it's pretty big. If it goes a bit further than what my vision can see, it starts to get blurry and like I can't make out what's there. But maybe a few, like a meter in front of me and I can see the net as well because it's a big object and it's usually a bright color like red. Sometimes I can't like see the team or where my teammates are. So they have to kind of tap the stick and then I can just pass the puck to them. For a lot of these families, they never thought they'd be in a hockey arena, right? They never thought they'd be a hockey mom or a hockey dad, right? And they are. And it's important, it's a community. And that's really what Canadian Blind Hockey is trying to do. Well, my son Joe is one of the players. Uh, he's been involved in blind hockey for about, I'd say five years now. Uh, it's incredible for him, both on the ice and off the ice, the camaraderie in the dressing room and just speaking to other people who face the same challenges that he does in everyday life. And then to be able to go onto the ice and compete against uh, people in a very highly competitive environment, but one where there's an equal playing field for him. Good hustle, everybody. Way to play. Way to stick to the game plan. Awesome. Yeah. We'll be proud of all of you here. The Canadian Blind Hockey League is a really inclusive place. When you get there, you get to really feel like you're at home with a lot of people that uh, kind of have the same situation as you. You guys played really, really hard. You stuck with the game and you stuck to the plan and I'm so proud of every single one of you coming in here. I feel like a, a superstar when I play here at Blind Hockey. I, like, I go into the room and everyone feels like a superstar. You're all playing high level for us at Blind Hockey. Watch the trailer, watch the pass. Watch the pass, watch the pass. Here we go. Nice try, nice try. Had I not found the Blind Hockey program, then I wouldn't be able to play hockey because of my vision. You guys are doing well, right? Put a smile on my face. So I'm really glad it's giving an opportunity to this, to people who otherwise wouldn't have found a thing they love. Here we go, someone in front of the net. You go from the regular minor hockey to the youth program for the blind. The difference is you see him just as one of the kids playing amongst each other, not kind of paying attention to the drill that's coming up. Uh, it just makes you feel like he's just a regular kid. There's, there's too many kids who are out there sitting on the sidelines or in the bleachers, not getting a chance because many ways sport, you know, commonly as we know it, is, is not adaptive or accessible. The puppy's name? Oh, Terry. Terry? Terry. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> he's working, but I'll take his vest out, and he's gonna be really fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's in work mode right now. So for blind hockey, because it's a loud noise making big puck, and others are also blind and partially sighted, it, it's so much more welcoming for people to say, hey, you know, I'm not the only blind hockey player out here, and who cares about how we play? The fact that we're out here playing is what's most important. Giant puddle ahead of you, eh? The pedal, yeah. Not, okay. Go a little bit farther, a little bit. Okay, now, now big step. Thank you, sir. You were kind of on the edge. <laughs> <of those. laughs> Cane umbrella. Okay. When you're Joey the Wall Cabral, you get, you get VIP. <laughs> the Canadian Blind Hockey National Tournament is the marquee staple event. Uh, it's been going for 10 years now. All right, hockey fans, let's get you set in this Canada-USA rivalry at the 2023 Canadian National Blind Hockey Tournament. We got this! I'm a proud member of Canada's National Blind Hockey Team. We're three-time gold medalists. I like to think it's Canada's most inspiring hockey team. I really mean that. We are taking on Team USA in uh, in a three-game series. 
Come on, boys, we got this. We got this. It's our game. All right, enjoy every single moment that you have with your brothers and sisters, and let's not let the score or last game dictate our energy level. All right? Let's have some fun and take advantage of this opportunity. We can't wait to go to war with it. Let's go. Yeah! yeah. We're almost at the top of that mount, man. Let's do it. Here we go, boys. Let's fire it up. Here we go. Let's go, boys. Picked up now, Miseraka wants to wheel forward, makes the sauce pass for Raymond, but on the delayed offside, they'll have to start up again. A minute 25 remaining on the power play. Ashe drops for Yuha. Yuha centers, top of the point. Mizoraka steps in. His shot attempt. What a block there by Kalian. He shoots. Mizoraka picks it up. Good one on me, baby. My teammate, Mark DeMontis. I love this guy. I, I can't explain how grateful I am for Mark DeMontis. He literally changed my life. Like, if Mark hadn't have done what he did for blind hockey, I wouldn't have, I don't know where I would be in my life right now. He, uh, I never would have had a community of other blind people to teach me, to show me that life isn't over and that I was gonna have no satisfaction ever again. And then he, he just, he gave me hope. For me, every single day, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I'm thinking about is, you know, what can I do today to ensure that a life will be changed tomorrow? Just because I've seen it happen, I've experienced a child who thought he would never get to play hockey, you know, weeks later, being in a dressing room before uh, a game, getting a pep talk from a coach. Hey, you're starting to get, come together as a team, but our goal is being a couple big saves. Good job to our coach. I've seen someone who just lost their sight, throwing in the towel on competitive sport, you know, weeks later, starting at center, you know, playing the game of their life. And to see the little wins, the first goal, or the, even the first shift, I mean, it, it has a lasting impression, that's for sure.